NASA just sent their latest telescope into space and it cost $10 billion, making it the most expensive telescope ever. It's been making headlines for a few weeks, but unfortunately, there's a new telescope that has made it, well, old news. To make things worse, the new telescope launching in 2026 is cheaper. $9 billion, $775 million cheaper. Oof. Welcome to the show. I'm Jonathan, and today we are talking about NASA's next big space telescope, the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. Costing just $225 million, it comes at a price much cheaper than the James Webb Telescope that is being utilized now. Webb is the world's most expensive option, coming in at $10 billion. So how is this low-budget option better? Well, the Roman Space Telescope is designed to help answer questions about dark energy, exoplanets, and seeks to understand our place in the universe. But before we go deep into the mechanics of this new telescope, let's talk about the person it's named after, Nancy Grace Roman. Born in 1925 in Nashville, Tennessee, Dr. Roman realized by the time she was in high school that she wanted to pursue a career in astronomy. By 21, she had her bachelor's degree in astronomy from Swarthmore College in Pennsylvania, and by 24, she had her PhD from the University of Chicago. Though she was quickly making a name for herself, she still dealt with many challenges throughout her career. Fortunately, even today, women deal with a lot in the world of STEM. During her time at the University of Chicago, it became very clear she would not obtain tenure due to her gender, so she left. She would go on to become the first female executive in NASA. Perhaps her biggest challenge ever was getting the Hubble Space Telescope approved by the U.S. Congress. Her hard work and dedication to Hubble is why she would eventually coin the nickname the Mother of Hubble. Now, let's dig into this all-new telescope. The mechanics of Roman are fairly similar to 1990's Hubble telescope. It uses a mirror that is the same size as Hubble's 2.4 meter mirror, but only one fourth the weight. Why copy the old technology? Well, Roman, like Hubble, will be capturing visible light images of space as well as some infrared. What this means is that it can capture space as we can see it, and a whole lot more. The Webb telescope works in infrared, showing us things our human eyes could never see. But why did I start this episode saying, so how is this low budget option better? In all fairness, it's just working in a different way. Roman will be able to capture wider images of space than Webb or any previous telescope. But just how wide? Webb and Hubble are designed to capture deep images in a narrow field of view. So to get a better idea of what kind of view Roman will be capturing, let's compare it to Hubble. Here, we can see the typical field of view from Hubble. We zoom out, we can see what Roman is able to do. Keep going. No, we have to zoom out a lot more than that. A little more. That, that is what Roman can see. Just look at the difference. Roman's view will be 100 times greater than Hubble, and it will be able to capture that data 100 times faster. Essentially giving us one image equivalent to 100 images by Hubble. The wide view will help astronomers uncover mysteries of the universe, like why the expansion of space seems to be accelerating. Now, some people believe this is due to dark energy, which takes up about 68% of the universe, and Roman will be able to test this. It will map out how matter is structured throughout the universe while measuring the expansion over time. To do this, the mirror will work alongside two instruments, the wide field instrument and the coronagraph. Coronagraph? The wide field is a 300 megapixel infrared camera that will be able to see ancient galaxies and help us uncover the mystery behind the expansion of space. The coronagraph will eliminate the glare of nearby stars, allowing astronomers to see planets that orbit those stars. It's like whenever there is a bright light in front of you and you have to put your hand up to block the light so you can see objects near it. Thanks to the advancements in technology, Roman will be able to see planets nearly a billion times fainter than their host star. What's wild is that Roman will be measuring the distance between galaxy clusters to see how they grew further apart over time. Roman will use a phenomenon called redshift, where it measures the light from distant galaxies, showing them more red the further away they are. As these galaxies are captured, astronomers will be able to basically create a 3D map to see how dark energy played a role throughout the cosmos. The wide field instrument will use Einstein's relativity theory to measure the matter within hundreds of millions of galaxies. Thanks to this image from the Webb telescope, we can see how clusters of galaxies can bend spacetime, allowing us to see around and beyond that cluster in the center 
to peek at the galaxies behind it. Roman will do this as well, but to show us new exoplanets. Roman will survey about 100 million stars with an expectation of discovering 2,500 new planets just within the Milky Way. Within those new planets, there will likely be a great number of rocky ones, which will put Roman as the pathfinder for future space telescope missions to directly image habitable Earth-like planets. The hardest part about building these telescopes may not be the time and effort and money, but rather the fact that their lifespans aren't that long. Both the James Webb Space Telescope and Nancy Grace Roman Telescope have a life expectancy of around five years. Maybe they can be stretched out to 10 if we are lucky. I mean, heck, Hubble was only supposed to last 15 years, but it's now 32 years old. So maybe the five years for Roman and Webb will extend beyond our expectations too. The reason they have a shorter lifetime when compared to Hubble is because of their location in space. Hubble is in low Earth orbit, which makes it possible to service if something goes wrong. In fact, it has been serviced five times since its launch. Roman, however, will be one million miles from Earth in Lagrange Point 2, which is where Webb is located now. And this location will give us a huge advantage to maximize the view and reduce fuel consumption. In a perfect world, both Webb and Roman would have launched around the same time to overlap their years in space. Use Roman to capture wide images like never before, and then target a small area with Webb to look deeper into the past. Is Roman really better than Webb? Meh, they just work differently. And Roman was a heck of a lot cheaper. Dr. Nancy Grace Roman was once asked what she thought was the most interesting discovery by Hubble. Her answer was dark energy, which of course is something that this new telescope will look at. Unfortunately, Dr. Roman passed away in 2018, so she won't be able to see this new telescope launch from Cape Canaveral in 2026. It sounds to me like this may be the perfect way to remember her, and hopefully her story can inspire new generations of astronomers. So what do you think about this new telescope? Are you excited to see some new planets, or are you just pumped to have these ultra-wide images of space? We may have some pretty amazing wallpapers for our computers, I can tell you that much. If you want to learn more about James Webb Space Telescope, then watch this video here. And as always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today?